everyone. This is Lori Weber from Joyful Heart Studio, and I thought that we would take another few moments to make some creative joy. Okay, so I have some music paper and some ledger paper here. I like to work with vintage and antique ephemera. So these pieces are very old, but that doesn't mean that you have to have old paper in order to clean it. You can use any paper. You could even use scrapbook paper. So I'm just going to tear pieces of this. Both. Um, yeah, I always like to have the treble clef show up. I think I'm going to come up to this side here. And just get some music on. And then I'm going to have the ledger paper on the opposite. This is where I started out on the other canvas, and I really like the way that it turned out. So let me just tear these down, and I'm going to adhere them on with matte medium. So I'm going to just brush matte medium on my canvas and on the back of the paper. And I I'm a messy, I keep baby wipes handy all the time because I get my hands right into my projects. I like to be able to feel the paper so I don't just brush over it and go. I kind of rub it down and squeegee the excess medium out from beneath the paper and that helps to eliminate wrinkles. So I'm gonna be very careful to make sure I have all of that excess medium out. And just put this upper corner. And it doesn't really matter if the papers overlap exactly or not because this is just the base layer. And then we're going to be adding on top of it so everything will fill in as we work. It's kind of nice to see the seams that adds interest into the background. So again, I'm just going to rub that down and make sure I have the excess out. And let's get some on the other corner. And I'm just kind of eyeballing the size here. Actually, let me go to my music. Oh, this is pretty. And my paper is hanging over the edges a bit. I'll trim that up. I'll trim that up as it, everything dries. Pull that over a smidge. And let's see. Like this. Just gonna go ahead and trim a little of this off. I'll sand paper edges at the end, but this way I won't be catching these little pieces as I work. Okay, so there's where we're going to start. And I'm going to, I, I wanted to work, I've been really stuck on these blues and the vintage pinks lately, and so that's what I'm reproducing again. So I'm going to use some heavy gel as a thickener and just start putting in some color. Grab my palette. Okay, I'm just gonna take a little heavy gel. And I'm gonna start with this pretty spa blue. I love this color. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix some of that into the heavy gel. So I have something thicker to work with. I'm going to start putting this kind of on my seams, on my edges. Just start letting the thickness of the heavy gel 
cover up some of the seams. And start bringing some color in, just so you can see that pretty light blue. And I'm going to be tinting the over the papers also, but I want to get this layer on before I do that step. So let me go ahead and just dry this a bit. That's all that nice texture there. And I'm going to use gesso and just give a little wash over the whole thing. I'm going to thin my gesso down with the matte medium so that it's transparent. I don't want to lose the print, especially on this pretty music paper. Done the gesso first and then added the blue. Sometimes ideas strike you though at different times and you can just go with it. You don't have to feel like, oh, it's too late to do a step. You just can layer and layer and layer. And I'm going to come back into this blue that I already have and I'm just going to touch, bring back my color in just a little bit. Um, Few of these places where I've kind of lost that. And then I want to add even a little more of the raw blue. I'm just going to use my fingertip. Bring this blue color right in. And then we need a little more interest, I think. So I'm going to use white gesso and just drag it here and there. Have that out on my palette. Let's just shadows up our colors just a little bit. I use this phrase in my classes a lot, um, so my students get a chuckle out of it because I'm always saying we want just we're just trying to be random, but sometimes we want to be, but I say strategically random. So I don't want to lose um, my music notes. I don't want to lose my um, the notations here, and so I'm working kind of around those. Okay, let me dry this one. And I have some very fine bubble wrap here. And so I'm going to add a little pink because my flower is going to have some pink and some red. So this is vintage pink. I'm using Deco Art Americana. And I'm going to also just brush a little matte medium into this color. And I'm going to add a little bit of texture from the bubble wrap. And 
And I just want to lighten that up a little bit. Just going to dab with my baby wipe to lift off a little of the color. This is going to be my background. And then I know that I want on the top of it, I want to add um, this phrase. I want to do a flower. So I drew out my flower on this piece of, um, this is a vintage magazine page. I've inked it on and I've got matte medium in my paint so that it will be nice and transparent. And I've just loaded one corner of my brush. So I'm just gonna come around the edges of the flower so I get the color at the tips of the petals and it's just fading down in toward the center. And I'm just going to tint them. Now this one, I have a little petal flip, so I'm gonna stay away from that. I want that to stay light. Okay, see how quick and easy it was to get that color on? And I'm going to ignore the leaves. Um, I drew this in with leaves, but I have some green postage stamps and I love to use postage stamps for leaves and I thought I would do that for this flower also. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of country red. I'm gonna put one little dot down on my palette here. And I'm going to reload my brush in that vintage pink just on the one corner. And then I'm going to just add a little touch of the red and blend that in. And I'm going to add this down at the base of the petals. So I have a darker color coming out from the flower center. I'm going to have this big fluffy center and it's going to cast a shadow on the base of the petals. I want to go a little darker. And so I'm gonna just do the opposite here, just as we tinted the tips, now I'm gonna tint the base. And that brings in a little more color to the flower, which is very pretty. And then again, this one is kind of curving up from the bottom. So I'm gonna add that color down here to the base and just pick up a little more color in my brush. And then these, we're seeing the bottom edge. Then one more, I'm gonna use um, soft black. It's my favorite shading color because it's already a very transparent color. And whatever it sits on, it just, um, if you load your brush and blend it out, it darkens the color that's below and still allows it to show through. So I'm just going to pick up a tiny little bit on my brush I'm going to blend, blend, blend on the corner until the color is very transparent. I can see the gray of my palette coming through, and so I know my flower color is going to come through. And I'm just going to choose a few edges to put, bring this color down so that it forces them to kind of be below. It's very obvious here that this big front petal is sitting on top. So I'm going to shade beside it, and then I'm just kind of working my way around determining which, when I add this shadow, it forces that petal back. So now by shading here, it just brings this petal forward. And let's get a little shadow on this one. We can see these petals are on top of it. So that's an easy one to choose. And it's just very, very light color. Do the bottom edge of this. See how it just lays on top of that country red and darkens it up for that pretty shadow. And I wasn't really thinking that I was going to highlight. I was going to let the remaining color, I was going to darken down so that the color that we started with became its own highlight. But I think I will add a little touch of light on the tip of my petal. Normally I would add the light color before the shadows and let the shadow just naturally cover my highlight. But um, as I said, sometimes we think of things on the fly and it's not too late. We're just going to go with it. I'm going to bring white just at the very tip of this petal and at this curve. I added the shadow on this side. So I'm going to bring that white. Let me turn my 
paper so you can get a better view. So I'm going to bring the highlight next to the shadow so they play together. Isn't that pretty and delicate? I'm going to do the same thing on this petal here on the left. I'm going to get this upper curve and then the outer curve. And then this petal is only a partial one, so I'm just going to touch the tip to bring that forward and help it to not disappear. Just going to touch my brush there, touch my brush here. Same thing with this one. Well, let's get this big one out of the way. Just touch it one time to the tip of that, and then this one is curving up the side. I'm just going to touch my brush on that one. And then this is the flip, so I'm going to add some white here. And in order for that to appear like it's flipping, we need a little dark underneath. I'm going to go back to my red. And just a smidge of the soft black. And I'm going to go right underneath that flip. See how it brings that out? Okay, and then I think I'm going to grab a line brush and thin down my red and a little soft black over here and pull a few little veins. I'm kind of doing this out of order from the way I would normally do them, but as I go along, it's hard not to add those details. I wasn't going to add so many details for this. I wanted to keep it quick and simple, but it's all, it's still quick. Pull up. I had already inked these on. I'm going to add a little color here. I feel like I possibly have some matte medium in this brush. I'm really not getting in. There we go. Getting good flow out of it. There we go. Okay. For the flower center, I'm going to use a little marigold. Again, I just need one little drop of color. I'm going to get a small karaoke brush. See if this is small enough. And I'm just going to stipple that center in. And we'll just zoom in here. And then I'm going to go into my white and just gently add a little white on top to create the tips of the center as if it's all fuzzy. Let's give this a dry. So I said in the, when I started this flower that I was going to paint it originally and decided, well, we'll just tint it to keep it short and sweet for a video. But then, ah, oh, when you're a painter, it's hard not to paint, isn't it? I'm going to um, just run a little shadow at the against this petal so it darkens the bottom of my flower center where it kind of disappears into the center of the flower. And since we're doing all of this anyway, I'm just going to push a tiny little C in the center here to create an indentation in the top of that scent flower center. I'm going to push to the left and then I'm going to do the same thing to the right and that gives us that little indent. Quick and easy. And then I'm going to use the tip of my brush and just add a few little white dots sprinkling around out onto the Petals. This pretty dainty little bits of pollen. I think we're ready to put this together. I'm going to dry this to make sure my little dots are dry. Okay, so I'm going to cut this out with my little detail scissors. I want to keep the ink so I'm going just to the outside of my ink lines. There's my flower. There's my flower. Just gonna lay my elements on so I can check the sizing. 
And this, this leaf, I think I need to trim just a little bit. And so I inked um, my lettering on with my pigment pen. And I thought I would show you that real quick. I'm trying to keep this video short and then I'm making it longer and longer as I show you more things. But um, I just take a piece of lined paper and lay, I have just a piece of tissue paper here like you would use if you're going to send someone a gift. It has a shiny side and it has a matte side and we're going to be inking on the matte side. We can't let the pen linger on the tissue paper very long or it will start to bleed in the tissue. You can ink on to just white paper and then copy it onto the tissue if you want, but I'm just going to do this on the fly here. So I'm going to start with the word grace. And I love these brush pens because you can get a fine line and you can get a nice thick line all um, very easily. So if you come up to the point, you're getting the thin like this, and then you add pressure to get the thicker. So we do the thick on the down strokes and thin on the up strokes. And then I'm going to go to a, see it bled through the tissue. So I'm going to come to another spot on my page. Make sure that I'm straight and then I'm going to letter his above it. I'm trying to kind of center this. And then is enough. I'm going to layer just below it. And sometimes you have to accept your handwriting to be enough because you can redo and redo and redo. Um, <laughs> and it's often not exactly what I wanted, but I've learned to have grace with myself too when it comes to this. I love to hand letter. I'm not great at it. I practice all the time and I can think I'm improving, but I'm not yet where I want to be. Um, but I, I just go with where I am because I don't want that to stop me from creating things. So I'm going to give this a dry with my dryer. I'm going to cover my little pieces so they don't blow away. The Tombow Fudanowski pen is a pigment pen. It is waterproof, but you do need to give the ink time to dry so it doesn't bleed. Okay, so I'm going to just take a paintbrush now and I'm going to paint a line around my lettering. And then I'm going to tear this out. I love to letter on the tissue because it takes the fear of lettering away. If you letter directly onto your project that you've put so much work into and you make a mistake, especially with ink, um, oh, it's so heartbreaking, isn't it? We've had that happen before, paint a project and then letter it and we loved it before, but our lettering is, and here I just said to have grace, but sometimes we just make an outright mistake when we letter. So by lettering on the tissue, if you do make a mistake, um, you can just letter another, another, another tissue. I'm just removing the excess tissue. You want to tear the edges and not trim it with scissors because the uneven torn edge is so much easier to mask on the finished piece. It sort of disappears into your project. And if you cut the edge, your eye is easily drawn to it. Okay, so let's see if I, after all of that, did I get this one too big or is it going to fit? I think I'm just going to fit to my flower. Okay, it's all going to be good. So let's grab a brush. And when I put down paper, I put down matte medium on both the front and the back. But when I do the tissue lettering or tissue, I, I use black and white ink um, tissue accents a lot of times in my art. 
You want to put down a very generous layer of matte medium only on the surface, not on the back of the tissue because the tissue is too fragile. It will absorb and then it'll, it will tear. So I'm just going to set this down. I'm only touching in the center at first so that I can make sure I'm straight. And then once I'm happy with the position, I'm just going to lightly kind of tap it into place. And then I'm going to start brushing out from the center and I'll remove the excess tissue. And I actually normally would put down my paper pieces first and then the lettering, but on this little canvas, I thought I would work from the top down, just more for the sake of the video. I have a little brush hair that I'm gonna take off before that dries. And once we start to get this tissue down, it just disappears. And what we're left with is that pretty handwriting. Before I start putting the paper pieces down, I'm just going to smooth this down, make sure that I have all the fingerprints taken off, and this is completely down. And then I'm going to just lightly position my flower because the leaves are going to tuck behind. I want to figure out where they're going to go first. And I'm going to take my flower off. And I'm just taking note of where these pieces are living. And I'm just putting them down lightly. And that way, if I need to adjust, I have time. This is where the tweezers come in handy. That to be tucked in there, so let me just lay my flower back on. And I can put these just where I want them. And then be very careful when you brush the leaves down because we don't want to disturb the tissue. If you're in my Facebook group, Joyful Heart Studio Creative Art Workshop, it's a free group, you're welcome to join us. I'm going to put the line art for this project up in the file section. And we'll see if anybody would like to create one. I'm just gonna, again, just feel, squeegee this out, get out the excess medium, eliminate bubbles and wrinkles. And then I'm going to give this just a careful light dry. I don't like to um, speed dry my tissue if I can help it. It's better if it dries on its own. But I want to add a few curls, which the matte medium you can paint right on top of. So technically, I don't have to have this dry before I add my little curly cues. But I'm going to go ahead and just give it a little bit of a dry. Thin down my white I still have left on my palette here. Okay, let's see. I want to have up over the top. Very light and delicate. And let's see. I think I'll come right over my flower with one. And I'm putting just another drop of white on my palette, which I'm going to come into so I can just pull a few little strokes for accents here. I 
and maybe a few little dots. Actually, I think I'll grab my stylus for that so I get a little bit larger. If my leaves are dry enough, I'm going to ink them so that they kind of tie into this flower a little bit better. So I'm going to add little side veins. I'm going to do a hit or miss outline. I'm not going to try to get every line. There we go. When this is completely dry, I will sand off my edges and I can show you on this canvas that I had started. It is dry, so I'm just going to take a piece of sandpaper or you can use an emery board and I will sand the edges of the paper right down to the canvas. So that you get this nice edge showing and I'm a, um, a distress lover so I'll probably take my distress ink and just ink up my edges like this which of course is totally optional but I just love the way that it frames and gives that vintage look you can use your fingertip and pull the color in further if you like. I'm pretty sure that's the way I'm going to finish this off. So there we go. I hope you like this little project. I hope you'll try it out. Um, if you do, post pictures so that I can see, especially if you're in my Facebook group. Um, and I would invite you to visit my page on Facebook, Joyful Heart Studio. Or the free group, again, is Joyful Heart Studio Creative Art Workshop. There's lots of um, classes available there, lots of workshops, and lots of free goodies in the file section. So if you enjoy mixed media, if you enjoy painting, and you haven't jumped in to give mixed media a try, I hope that you will. Um, I'd love to see you there. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would invite you to subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, which I hear my daughter say all the time on her YouTube channel. And mine is fairly new, so... I couldn't really hear myself saying that, but go ahead and hit the thumbs up button and subscribe and grow along with me and create along with me. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.